How's it going guys? In today's video we're going to be going over a concept which is called lazy loading and we're going to be doing this in Swift UI. So let's get started immediately with the project and we're just going to create a list with many usernames and I'll explain more as we build the project. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create a scroll view because we want to create some content that's going to go off the screen and we want the user to be able to scroll to it. Now, usually if you would want to do this, you would go ahead and create a V stack because that just allows you to put items on top of each other until the point that you can actually scroll off the screen. But in today's video, of course, we need to go over the lazy V stack and the same thing goes for the lazy H stack. But we're going to be using this first and just to get started, we're going to add an alignment of dot leading. Now for this example, we will just be doing everything that we would normally do in a VStack, except we're going to be using a lazy VStack. And as soon as we're finished with this sample code, I will explain exactly what's going on. So inside here, we're going to go ahead and create a for each loop as we would normally. And we're going to create 1000 items. And the ID is going to be set to backslash dot self. Then we will specify for each row in the following code, and we will edit that. Now, I want to mention that it's very important we do this with a lazy VStack, because you might notice immediately if you use a VStack alone and you try to loop 1000 items, your whole editor is going to lag a lot, but the lazy VStack will save us from that trouble. Now inside here, let's go ahead and provide an H stack with an image of system name, and it's just going to be person.fill. So as you can tell, it's already doing a lot of work trying to load all of these. But let's continue and I will explain as we move on. Foreground color will be set to dot blue. Then we'll go ahead and provide a text with a backslash and provide the row number followed by the name and the surname. Now for each one of these rows, I also want to go ahead and provide a padding of 30 so we have less items on the screen to render. But actually with the code we've written so far, it's already going to be a good place for me to explain what I'm talking about. So just to explain a bit, when we use a V stack and we create 1000 items, all of these items are being rendered at the exact same time on the screen, which means even if we can't see it, they're still being rendered and requiring an immense amount of processing power. What the lazy V stack does is make sure that we're only rendering the items that are currently on the screen, which means instead of rendering all thousand items immediately, we're only rendering what we can see on the screen for that moment. And when we scroll, it's going to render more items. So it's just telling the program that, hey, we can't even see what you're rendering, so I don't render it until we get to that point of the screen. And just to demonstrate, we're also going to go ahead and call on a peer. So you'll notice that each time we create a text view in the for each loop, it's going to call this code. And we're just going to print row loaded. Now let's go ahead and run this program. So it's going to load here. And actually I need to drag this over there because what's important is that we notice what's happening in the console. So let's take our emulator back and pay attention to the console. As you can see, even if we have 1000 items, it's only loading 10 at a time which means as we scroll, it's going to load them as we get to the item. And the ones that get pushed out of existence will also be reloaded as we go back to them. So this will save us a lot of trouble with the processing power of the iPhone. And it's definitely recommended that you use this if you know you're going to have a lot of data being displayed on your phone, because if you load it all at once, it's going to slow down the program a lot. And to demonstrate, let's go ahead and change the lazy V stack to just a V stack. The first thing you should notice is that Xcode more or less is going to give you a lot of problems. I'm going to have a really hard time actually moving this as soon as I preview, because now it has to render all those items at the same time. And it's also going to place this in the center because I forgot to mention that the lazy V stack takes all the available space on the screen, while the V stack of course just wraps the content. But now the first thing you're going to notice is because we have a thousand items, any changes you make inside here are going to happen with a huge delay to the preview window. 
And let's also go ahead and run the program and see how long it takes to start up even. So now we started it and okay, it didn't take that long because it's only a thousand views. But if we go to our console and we actually scroll, you're going to notice that all of the views are loaded and that they are permanently loaded on the app, which is a very bad deal for our app because we can't even see any of these views. So the whole purpose of the lazy V stack is just to save us that trouble. And let's go back to it immediately because my computer is really freezing up right now. And as soon as we edit that, and once again, preview the app, it's going to change back to what we had earlier. And it's going to make the app completely manageable and not bug out my program anymore. But anyways, guys, to sum it up, remember to use a lazy V stack if you have lots of data that has to be loaded on the app immediately. Otherwise, of course, if it's a small chunk of data, you're more than welcome to use a V stack, especially for a single screen, it doesn't really matter. Or for even 20 items, I would still use a V stack. But the lazy V stack will just guarantee that we have the most efficient scrolling possible on our iOS device at the given moment that we are scrolling through millions of items or even just 100 items. But with that being said, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.